G'day everyone and welcome to the Trackstone Spotlight. Well, today I've discovered that Australia is getting a space program, but I also discovered that New Zealand has had one for a while. I'm going to have a guest in to talk about that right after this. Well, joining me from Canberra is Brad Tucker from the Australian National University. Brad, thanks so much for your time, man. No worries, any time. I love talking space. <laughs> now, let's talk space because we're getting a space program according to the federal government. What does that mean to you? So, yeah, so I think the official start date of the space agency is the 1st of July. And uh, what it really is, is it's kind of a... Um, it's a formation and an, um, putting under an umbrella stuff that's already been happening in Australia. Australia's been doing a lot of stuff. In fact, we actually just worked on a satellite that was launched a few weeks ago called the GRACE follow-on mission. Um, and what has been missing is kind of a lack of coordination from groups. There's groups in ACT, Melbourne, South Australia, Western Australia, Queensland, Northern Territory, all doing slightly different things. And the space agency hopefully brings them together, because when I say NASA, you think of one group, but actually NASA has 14 different centers across the US, plus different smaller hubs at universities, and they all work on different parts of big projects. So when you say NASA, it's actually this huge organization. So we have a lot of the parts already. It's trying to put that together so that we can do some of these big projects that we want to really do here and also do them that on the things that affect our everyday lives. So what does that mean for someone like you? Uh, because the last time that we spoke uh, was the Canberra road trip a couple of years ago and, and you were um, building satellites to launch into orbit. That's right. And so, in fact, we've actually increased that. So we're actually building about two satellites a month at this rate wow. already now. Um, in fact, there is one that was just being tested uh, and, and ready for launch in the next month. So there's this rapid movement where we are doing this almost mass production of satellites now. Uh, and in fact, as you mentioned with New Zealand, there's actually even collaboration between Australia and New Zealand now as part of this. And that's what the space agency will do. So what I think what we're hoping to see is that now with both a centralized thing, because we actually have a problem where we need some bureaucracy. It's not often said that we need bureaucracy, <laughs> but this is one of those times because when I want, let's say I want to launch something, well, the way stuff like space insurance is done, because that's a real thing, <laughs> it has to be done through these special acts of parliament that justifies to a launch company in a different country. It's this very convoluted thing because there's no central point that you go to do activities. That's what the space agency will do, plus some money to do um, international projects. Uh, and one of the cool things in the budget that was announced was this $225 million to improve our GPS. And so this is something that's going to be done here um, with Geoscience Australia and us, and that we're going to improve GPS positioning from five meters to about two to three centimeters. Wow. So that's kind of like knowing whether you're at home to what part of what room you're in. Mm. And so the propagation, the effects on business will be tremendous on this kind of technology. At this point, I know it's a little ways off, but are we going to start seeing Australian astronauts uh, getting into space from Australian launch sites, do you reckon? So, so I think that's, it, it's a bit of a ways off. But I actually think potentially seeing Australian launch sites isn't as far as Australian astronauts. And that's because Australia has one great thing about it, and that is geography. We have lots of land, but we cover a lot of latitude east to west and longitude north to south. So places towards the northern part of Australia, you can put around the you can put satellites around the equator. And because the climate is actually quite dry in most of those places, you know, there's a few tropical places, but most areas are dry. Um, if you look at all the other equatorial sites, they're Equatorial Guinea or Florida, they're rainforests that, you know, you always hear of launch delays because of weather. Well, when you have a dry desert, that's a pretty good place to launch stuff. <laughs> so you kind of have the thing that if you build it, people will come to launch stuff. So I think we will see that sooner rather than later, and the Northern Territory is planning this. But it's also, I think we can think that in the future, we could see Australian astronauts. We want to grow this. You don't start from day one putting people into space, but mm -hmm. neither did NASA. Um, so I think we want to focus on some products that return investment to the space agency and build it up that way. Well, there was a line in the movie, uh, I think it was Field of Dreams, build it and they will come. Uh, he, he built a baseball field and, and they did come. So Exactly, uh, so and I think if we will see if you build a rock, rocket pad. In fact, there's already been inquiries from overseas groups because, you know, for one of the things, um, some of these satellites we're building, they're going on SpaceX and they have to go to Florida. Well, why can't SpaceX launch from Australia? In fact, groups like Google X, their experimental division that does drone flights and balloon flights, is actually already doing stuff in Australia because we have very flexible laws with our civil re regulation authorities and the landscape. So putting something into space is no different. 
And I will declare too, of course, we have had an Australian astronaut, uh, Dr Andy Thomas, uh, but of course he joined the NASA Astronaut Corps uh, and, and um, was launched into space a couple of times. It, it was, and he was that, that first astronaut that Australia had. And one of the things we can start doing is some of this money that was allocated in this year's budget is actually to join international projects. It's not too hard to think in the future of maybe joining um, projects for the International Space Station. In fact, here just last month, we, ha we hosted the German Space Agency to start planning three new missions, one on astronomy, um, one on Earth observations, because if you can look upward, you can also look downward. Mm -hmm. um, and we're looking on technology where we can actually point to the ground and pick the exact elements, say carbon dioxide or even minerals underneath the ground and find those deposits and those resources actually from space. Uh, and then we're gonna look at doing something that's called optical communications. So this is a really cool thing that we actually want to put data into a laser beam and send it. What that means is that you can actually get data transfer rates of a terabyte per second. Wow! So that's like downloading an entire season of a, sh uh, a season of a television show in less than ten seconds. Wow! <laughs> so you know that'll who, really who improve that binge watching. <laughs> exactly. That's right. <laughs> well, fantastic, Brad. Uh, exciting things to come, and uh, I, I reckon um, I might get you back a little bit later on when uh, the space agency launches and we've got things heading into orbit. Because I think it's yeah, I think it's not too far along. Fantastic. Brad, thanks so much. No worries, anytime.